Welcome back to the Ripe Wave Audio community. My name is John, and for this video, we have uh, news for the owners of the Emotiva RMC1 and those who are potential buyers for this product. And you may have been waiting a long time because this is the model, the step up from the RMC1L, uh, to pay that extra thousand dollars to get the expansion capability. They finally have released. Uh, expansion modules in the form of inputs, a balanced XLR and a phono stage, and they're available now for purchase. So the first module is the balanced XLR. So those who are looking for uh, that high quality input, another input beyond what comes with the unit, perhaps you have multiple uh, source material from maybe a nice DAC, a CD player, a Blu-ray player that has balanced outputs on it, this will accommodate two additional ones per module. And what they're doing is they're giving you two options to purchase this. One as a self-install, which will come with a ground strap protector. They have released a video on how to install these modules, and they provide installation manuals so you can do this yourself. If you do not feel confident in executing this step yourself, you can send your unit to Emotiva to have them install this for you. And there's a, just a really a, a $25 adder fee uh, for them to do this, $224. But you do lose the use of the machine. You have to ship it out to them. Uh, so that's why you have to weigh out the, the, the inconvenience of shipping it out versus uh, the, the inconvenience of to do it yourself and the the responsibility you take when you open up the case and you don't want to uh, shock anything but at least they provide that ground strap protection and as you can see this is a pretty uh, simple uh, adder to this you know a lot of the other logic is already on the IO board that's internal to the RMC one uh, but this gives you that additional hardware connections and some circuitry to make this happen and they give you a ribbon cable that connects this module to that I.O. board inside the unit. The other product that they have is a phono stage. And what is really neat about this is it's not just a moving magnet, which if you look at all the processors and receivers out there with onboard phono stages, I don't believe I've encountered one. And we've looked at a lot, you and the whole community here together. They've all been moving magnet only. This one is also selectable for moving coil cartridges. So for um, turntable enthusiasts uh, that have a moving coil car cartridge, this could be your answer. And so where we see the photos here, you can select on the back. Of course, if you change out your cartridges, uh, uh, often uh, you know you do have to get into the back of this and change those selector switches. Uh, for the capacitance that you want to select, as well as it's moving coil or moving magnet. Uh, but once, if you're a set and forget it type of uh, arrangement, then you don't mind going around the back and making these settings. And you can see that this is their own Jade design board, uh, that that's their own in-house board manufacturing. Uh, so, you know, this this is what it is, and it's it's very similar to the the other input board, where it has a ribbon cable that connects from this to the I.O. board. And the price is a little uh, more for this. The self-installed price for the phono stage is $249. And the Emotiva service option for them to do it for you is $274. So again, it's just a nominal fee to have them do that. The phono stage product is very much like the XPS-1. In fact, it, they say that it is based on the XPS-1. Uh, the cost is a little different. Uh, so the XPS-1 is $199 versus the self-install for the, uh, the Phono Stage expansion module is $249. So it's a $50 add, but there's the same specification. And this is what it would look like uh, in the boards itself. You can see there's slight variations in the board design. Uh, while it is based on the same uh, technology, 
But we do see, you know, looking at the specifications, I did compare the spec, spec sheets between these, and they are exactly the uh, same specifications here. Obviously, the specification is going to be a little different between a moving coil and a moving magnet. You know, it's going to be on the moving magnet. Does it need as much gain? That's 40 dBs of gain. Moving coil is going to give you 60 dBs of gain. Uh, this, the RII curve uh, is plus or minus 0.25 on moving coil, 0.12 dBs on moving magnet. Uh, the signal to noise ratio. The moving coil is 79 dB, expected because that's a lower signal, and 96 dB signal to noise on the moving magnet uh, side of things, and the harmonic distortion, etc. You can see from what's listed here. Uh, so those are the specification. It matches the XPS one. You now gives you an option of whether you're going to do internal or external. Now one thing to consider before going in is how far away your turntable is going to be from the RMC1. You know, the cables that come on some of these turntables are a certain length. They're hardwired. You do not want to extend the length of those unbalanced connections uh, from the turntable. Uh, so if your turntable is more than, let's say, six feet or whatever that length of that cable they give you with it, you might be better off with the external XPS1 or your favorite phono preamp. So just keep that in mind. There is something to consider on whether to make this internal or not. Also note, again, having if you want to change out your cartridges, having to reach around the back and use those jumper switches may not be the best use case. So let's take a look at how these modules go in. If you turn around the RMC1, you look at the back of it, there are three expansion module slots. And these will populate into it. So this particular picture here has got the, uh, the input module in slot one and the phono stage in slot two. And slot three is not used because these modules cannot use slot three. And uh, you know, so when you do install this, you know, it will connect to one of the open slots on the main board, on the I.O. board, and what slot you go in will determine the, the I.O. number. It will be assigned by default. And there is also a connection on uh, the board, the main board, for the internal ground, so you have to run that ground wire from the, the expansion module to the main board. Of course, the video and the installation manuals explain all this, but this is going to give you an idea of what you're in for when you, when you do this. Now, they give you a lot of options here of how these things can be installed. So they're saying that these modules, to maximum of the input type, can be installed in any combination. So you could have just one of either type in either slot one or slot two, or if you want to have a mix, let's say you have the XLR input in slot one, the phono stage in slot two, or the reverse, phono in slot one, XLR in slot two, or perhaps you have two turntables. You can actually install two of the phono stages in the RMC1, or two of the um, XLR inputs uh, in those slots. Slot three is for future modules, and for what I'm understanding, that's going to be for outputs. The other thing to keep in mind, if they're going to allow outputs to be installed in any one, any, any one of these slots, slots one through three, if you populate these with the input or the phono stage, you're going to have less slots available for outputs. So think down the road, how many outputs do you want to extend the base of 16 outputs that are in an RMC1? Uh, going forward. If you think you need more outputs, you, you may be better off, again, going with an external phono stage and keeping that slot for more outputs. When you power this up after installing it, you should probably update to the latest version of the firmware, which I believe is 1.5 from my notes, and that was posted on August 15th. 2021 as of this video, um, and that will give you the support for these. It will power up, and when you go look at your inputs, 
you will see the new inputs listed. So the phono stage will come up in, in as phono two, or the um, uh, or the the balance inputs as balanced two or three. You know, depending on which slots you had put in into. They also allow you to rename these labels. So if, if those num default numbers don't make sense to you, you're okay. So that wraps up our coverage of the new expansion modules. But you're probably thinking, when are the outputs coming? And we don't know that either. Uh, but we're excited that Emotiva, this was a long time coming, we're excited that they finally did release some modules, giving some value to those who have spent the extra thousand dollars for the RMC-1 over the RMC-1L. And we also are hopeful that they'll soon have an update to the HDMI board to support 2.1 uh, with that. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that more good things are coming from Emotiva uh, for those who own it or are considering purchasing it. With this video concluding, you know, what are your thoughts on this? Are you excited about Emotiva uh, coming out with these modules or are some of the problems of the past with these units, you know, still have you hesitant and moving forward with uh, this, mod this, uh, this uh, solution? That feedback would be useful for the RipeWave Audio community. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave Audio community and be sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified the next time a video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.